what's up guys how are you we want to be transparent with you we have been growing as a company brands have taken notice we have a deal with DraftKings this month there will be some ad reads on my videos some of jimmy's breakdowns it's a good thing it's a good thing for our company we're going to get to continue to produce high quality content and we're just going to keep going so again, thank you for the support. We did not want you guys to be blindsided. This is the warning. If you want to yell at somebody, you can yell at me on Twitter, at Trevor Plouf. Come yell at me. Thank you. Here's the video. Grab your peanuts and popcorn. Baseball is back. That's right. The boys will be getting back out on the diamond this week. And while we may not be able to join them in the stadium, there's plenty of action to be had from the comfort of your home. There's no better place to get in on the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. To celebrate baseball coming back, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering free bets for every home run your team hits. Taking advantage of this Grand Slam offer is easy. All you have to do is place a pregame bet of at least $25 on your home team, and for every home run they hit in that game, you get $5 worth of free bets. Bet the team. They hit the home runs. Double down. We get more money. I like it. Additionally, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering all new users a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Anything for free is for me. I like that offer. Don't worry if baseball isn't your game. DraftKings offers Great odds and promotions on all sports ranging from ping pong to basketball. If you want to bet ping pong, you can do it. DraftKings Sportsbook is U.S. based, making it safe, secure, and reliable. Gotta love that. Plus, it's easy to deposit and withdraw your funds whenever you want, which is a huge thing. All the books want to take your money. Are they going to give you your money when you want it? DraftKings will. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code JOMBOY when you sign up. For a limited time, all new users get a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. That's code JOMBOY, J-O-M-B-O-Y, to get your sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey only. Bonus compromise of a first deposit bonus and a first bet match, each up to $500. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe. And today we have another very special guest on the program, the co-host of the Starting Nine podcast, sideline reporter, baseball analyst for NBC Sports up in Oakland, and... One of only 23 pitchers in the history of the damn game to go 27 up and 27 down. My man, Dallas Lee Braden. What's up, dude? Cluvy, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. I appreciate you coming on. We've been talking for a little bit, trying to get you on here, and today uh, ended up working out. How's, yeah. uh, how's quarantine life? Man, it's, uh, it's quarantine life, dude. <laughs> for real, I'm watching my ch- my children are having birthdays during quarantine. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're all getting older during this, but uh, we got baseball around the corner, man. So I can't wait to get that slap across the face of the leather getting popped. The, uh, I'm not a big fan of the crack of the bat. I could do without the crack <laughs> of the bat, but, uh, you know, I get it. Fans need it. Are you a big crowd noise guy pumping it in? Do you think that's what we need to be doing? Or could we – I've heard other guys suggest the NBA style of music during the innings. Uh, what, do you, what do you prefer? Well, I'm in a unique position to tell you what it's like to play in front of very little fans, <laughs> even when fans are allowed. You know what it's like yes, as I well. Do. Um, but you also know what it's like to play in in a place where it's raucous and you can't even think for yourself because there's just so much going on. And and there are there are advantages to both, I guess. If you want to find a silver lining with nobody around, uh, gives you the you know the ability to concentrate, mm-hmm. to, you know, a supreme amount of focus. That that's cool. Uh, but crowd noise. I think it's tired. I think it's more to appease people who are uncomfortable in their own silence or in silence amongst others, which I've never, I've always enjoyed the, uh, you know, that level of uncomfortable silence. It's kind of like a staring contest. Who's going to crack her? I could give a damn about the noise. I really could because you don't, you don't hear much or see much other than what the task at hand is. So I could care, you know, if they were pumping crowd noise or, or, or bumping, you know, too short in the bay, like it wouldn't matter to me. That would Although, be fun. That'd be sweet. <laughs> that would be sweet. Yeah, the crowd noise thing's weird to me, but I do also feel like, you know, if you're getting out of a big end and you get a big hit and you kind of want to like express some emotion and nobody's around, you're going to kind of 
look like a weirdo. No, not at all. Like, you don't think so? No, dude. You know what I'm anticipating? This is what I'm anticipating. The first time that Scherzer gets out of that jam and there's nobody around to stifle the (laughs) foot stomp. (gasps) Like, there's, you're going to get every bit of that. You're getting every bit of that. Oh, absolutely. Now, that was the first thing I said when they talked about miking up players. I was like, buddy. I cannot wait for that mic to stay on during a close call at the dish. You've got the catcher, the umpire, and the hitter that just got fucked all talking about what's going to be beautiful. Yeah, I love that. All right, we had some technical difficulties. We were just talking about the crowd noise. Oh, you. Yeah, my bad, my bad. But enough (laughs) about Scherzer and the crowd noise in the season this year. We want to talk about you. All right, I'm into it. We're draft classmates, 2004 yeah. You get drafted out of the twenty in the twenty fourth round out of Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. When I'm looking at your stats, you kind of blew through the minor leagues. So first, yeah. what's up with that? Because that's bullshit. Because I spent a long time there. Yeah, like that's that's the only part. Like that's really the only part of the baseball career that I, I could ever talk shit about or like be in a power position with. Because I did. I I had a good time in the minor leagues. Um, 2005 was, was a really good year for me. That's the year that I went from high A. I started the year in high A in my first full season in pro ball and got to double A by the end. But like I won my first, I think I, think I won my like first 12 or 13 decisions. It was like 13 and 0, 14 and 0 wow. through, through high A to double A and led all of minor league baseball, or excuse me, led all of baseball like major leagues, minor leagues in strikeouts and, <laughs> in strikeouts. Yeah. And that's, that's why I was like, because the Scroogey, Oh buddy was on its best behavior. Oh, Just my absolutely disgusting. That's I want to ask you, like, give us your pitch mix number one. And then two, if you have someone, I'd like to know who you emulated, you know, growing up and then kind of, you know, in your time in pro box, everyone kind of has that guy they look up to model their game after, uh, who was that for you? So, Pitch mix is four seamer, two seamer, cutter, slider, and a couple different change ups, you know, and a screwball. And I think it's important to, to note this though. The two seamer is something I would tell myself or I would call a sinker. And that was because okay. I mentally needed to trick myself into throwing a pitch that was going to get the result I was after. And I I don't know that I could get that with a two seam fastball. But you could get that with a sinker, okay. right? So it's kind of how I would trick my – I was lying to myself. <laughs> and and the slider the slider was so that I would continue to utilize fastball arm speed and fastball hand speed because if I would tell myself curveball, I would slow everything down because I, I, I had a nice banger in high school. And, I, I mean, that's why I got drafted out of high school was because my curveball. But that went away when I discovered the screwball. In junior college, I picked up a I picked up a ball and threw it into the net in JUCO and had a funky grip on it and was like, "Whoa, how did that happen?" What's the screwball grip? Is it a circle change ish? Is it a um? What you got, no, man? it's a. Uh, I'm I'm looking just hold, hold tight. Let me get a foul. Let me get a baseball. All right, all right. Screwball is not something you see too often, uh, but you gotta love that. Dallas is scrounging around looking for a ball. He's got one there. He's back. All right. So. Uh, the the cha- change up, you know, is more here. Yeah. The four seam change up, and then you can go with a two seam change up as well. Mm-hmm. And start moving that guy around, but then the screwball is getting getting on the inside of the baseball. Whoa! So it's with the middle finger. Are you pronating like that? So not not until release. So with the middle finger, I'm pulling down and then with the index finger i'm pulling this seam as well and so at at release it's just a a flick of the wrist and then a manipulation of the fingers and that's what gets you that you know it's almost like a right-handed slider spin you get a dot and Mm. there's certain things that that you know i can do with the ball to bounce it on the ground or throw it up in the air to tell me that i'm getting the spin that i'm looking for to know that I'm, you know, letting the ball go correctly. This is all pre, you know, yeah. rap soto and all that. I was that gonna jazz. say, man, like put you in front of a rap soto and see what that thing's doing. Have you ever, have yeah. you tried to teach somebody that? 
Um, I've talked to a lot of guys about it. Yeah. And I, I, you know, the idea is just trying to find that hybrid, something that they're comfortable with because it's very foreign to, to even think about trying to stay inside of a ball that much from, you know, handbrake all the way to release and then end up pronating as well. So it's, it's a very weird concept. Okay. Um, you're, you're like a throw the kitchen sink kind of guy. You rely on location, changing speeds. And when I asked you about, you know, what a bats we wanted to do today, you brought up Michael Young mm-hmm. and the bat brought- that you had against him. And then when I think about you two matching up against each other, that's the classic chess match. Yeah. Like, you're it's trying a- to stay ahead of him. He's trying to stay ahead of you. And it's like the battle of the wits. And then you got to add the catcher in. And in this particular clip we're going to watch, it's Kurt Suzuki. So I'm going to give the advantage to you most of the time. If your two brains working against Michael Young, I like your chances there. I don't know what the numbers are, but I would like him too. I don't know that the numbers are great. And Michael <laughs> Young is about as pro as it gets. Yes. He's worn the right center field gap out in Arlington thousands, literally oh. thousands of times. Yes. Uh, as I was going through these clips, uh, I was listening to the at bats, and the announcer said something about in his last 1,000 balls put into play, that only 250 of them have been pulled. Which is insane. That That's is not something you ever hear. No, no. And I can remember at bats where he would just end up, probably just end up dropping the head on something that I've left middle, and it's it's pulled because he's like, oh well, I can, you know, I can do that. I can resort to that, you know, if I need to. But my professional approach, I'm looking to pepper that. Yeah, it's just like great. Thanks. The Mike. professional man. Oh, just it, a, a, an assassin. As a hitter, it's so hard to keep that uh, mindset. I mean, during a season, let alone a whole damn career, and that's what the guy did, and that's why he is who he is. So, oh yeah, when you you could see you could see like he's a guy that I, I talk about guys that you can feel in the box, you can feel an approach. If you don't feel them physically because they're not you know overly sized or whatever, but you can feel their approach, he's that guy. As soon as he steps in the box, like you've been watching his abs, the classic foot down, he's ready to go, and it's like you, you almost feel like, well, shit, how am I going to get this ball past him? You know, now I got to make him hit it weekly at best. Yeah, he's a he's a guy you don't see too much anymore. As far as like you said, that foot down kind of the setup he has. Those guys are kind of getting out of the game. Mm-hmm. But as I talk to more and more pitchers and hitters, the power versus power matchup usually the favor lies with the pitcher. Sure. So I'm yeah. wondering if in these next couple of years, as we see guys continue to hammer that top of the zone with the four-seam fastball. If we're going to see hitters maybe try to go the other way and say, look, it's really hard for me to match power to power at that part of the zone. I might have to tone it down a little bit. I'm wondering if that's going to come. Player development right now says no. But you need the results eventually. And and honestly, you can take take player development and go, you know, take a long walk off a short cliff with that (laughs) because what are you – you're – there, I, I don't know how much emphasis is really placed on approaches these days in mm. player development. I think there's instructors that are few and far between within organizations that really give a damn about guys that give a damn about their swing and they'll spend all day, cage rats, right? You know, yeah. Them. Yeah. And, and they'll spend, you guys will spend all day in a cage with a guy that cares with an instructor that cares about how much you care about your swing and being able to focus on the intricacies and the nuances of approaching a baseball, attacking a baseball, and really understanding what the guy on the mound is trying to do to you because understanding that can unlock some things that are happening at the dish for you guys. And finding somebody that cares enough about that and is willing to you know, whittle away at this let's just do damage sort of mindset, my whole theory is – when that guy who's peppering the right center gap and is being able to, you know, touch it with two, as I say, two strikes is still a tough out. Mm-hmm. If that guy starts getting compensated, Ploofy, yes. well, then we start then we start to see a shift in approach. But until that guy starts to get paid out in arbitration or in free agency, meaning that approach is rewarded, in, until that happens, you're not going to see that foot down, touch him with two approach. It's not going to happen. I totally agree. I mean, guys, guys work their entire life to get to that short window where they can maximize their, their salary. And if there's an approach that you're not going to get paid as much as the other guy, you're not going to take it. 
Nope. That's Bottom line, you're totally right about that. And we could talk for days about player development, where it's going. Mm. Um, but again, we're here to talk about you. So let's, well, first, 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 I want to know if you did have a guy that you emulated coming up. Uh, two, so two guys, I, I talk about this a lot because technology is such a big part of the game these days. Um, you know, when I was in the big leagues, that's when iPhones came out. That's when iPads came out. The day that iPads came out, I bought, I, I bought a bunch of them, <laughs> I, uh, but I took two of them and took them into my video guy to Adam Roden, took him to Puddin, you know, Puddin, mm-hmm. and said, Puddin Pop, I need Puddin. one of these to be full of Mark Burley against our opponents and one of these full of uh, Jamie Moyer against our okay. opponents. Got it? Go Because it does me no good to watch my, you know, watch guys that I, I, I would salivate over, you know, a Randy Johnson type, a Dontrell Willis. Like, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm watching those guys just to be excited about being left-handed <laughs> and watching them undress hitters. That's fun. Different I, I'm not taking shit. What am I taking away from that? Compete? Yeah, I, I've got that gene in me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need to watch them to get that. I know. Yeah. Yeah, you're I from got Stockton, that. baby. <laughs> what? Two and nine. Holla. My goodness. But, but I don't, but I don't have... I don't have that attack plan. I, it, it would do me no good. So I filled those iPads up with those two guys who were master manipulators. Any pitch, any time, any location to any man didn't matter. They, in my opinion, were as close of a version, guys like Al Leiter as well, the, uh, close of a version of um, a golfer and how they aren't playing the rest of the field, but they're playing the course. As, I love that. As pitchers, they're not necessarily competing against the other lineup. They are applying and executing their craft. And they have gotten to a point of mastery where the individual at the plate is of little to no consequence because they already know how to attack that guy. You know, that, And that was something that I tried to emulate. Have a game plan for a power righty, slap righty, power mm-hmm. lefty, slap lefty. Know your opponent. And, and be able to apply a game plan and then adjust from there. And that was something that I, I could take away from those two dudes. I mean, we have a lot of young kids watching these videos. I mean, that's just great advice. You know, have a plan. That's that's more than half of baseball is going up there prepared. Well, and I would say, I would say acknowledge who you are. You know, sure. uh, there's two people, there's two people you should be lying to in this world, your doctor and yourself. And, and, you know, your doctor's there to save your life. So let he or she know everything that's going on. Why would you lie to that person that they're there to save your life? And yourself, why would you lie to yourself? You're the one who's going to get you to where you want to be. So me waking up and telling myself I had Randy Johnson or D-Train type stuff and go ahead and go out and attack people that way, that would have been foolish. But Absolutely. understanding who I was and embracing it, my guy was Kirk Reeder growing up, you know, Bay Area. Okay. So I, I'd watch Kirk Reader and I, I just, I knew who he was. I knew what I was going to get. I, I knew who I was and, and I wasn't going to fool myself. You could say the same thing about hitters. I mean, right now we're trying to maximize everyone's power potential, but when you're 10 years old, you don't need to have that AA swing in your bag just yet. Just hold off on that. Let's focus on some hand eye. Let's focus Back on making ball. consistent contact. Let's work on using the entire field. Those advanced moves, those will come. Going back to golf, why are we going to talk to this 10-year-old about fading the ball, about drawing the ball? Like you're going to talk to a 10-year-old about how to apply, like how to hit a high cut or how to hit a draw or a low stinger on the golf course? Like there might be some that have the capacity for that, but you're probably still just focusing on ball striking, right? Let's hit this ball consistently consistently and Absolutely. that's what you should be doing at a young age is releasing the ball consistently out of your hand not necessarily learning how to spin it so early same thing at the plate learn how to get bat to ball bat to ball yes. skill that'll always play i tell people that all the time i'm like look i get it you're watching these guys hit homers you know that's what's going to get you the ops the extra base hits putting the ball in the air but you can do a lot of shit in the cage you got to be able to do it in the game against the pitcher that's controlling all the variables. So you better have a bunch of different clubs in your back because you can't just take that. Like people say, get your ace me up, get your ace me up. Sure, in plus counts when mm-hmm. you can right. get the pitch you're looking for. But right. if you take that ace swing on a slider down the way, you're going to have the Chris Carter effect. You're just going to be taking the exact same swing and the guys are going to miss your bat every time. 
And if you don't have an approach, you're never going to be able to work yourself into those advantageous counts. Exactly. The, cri the cripple counts that I'm trying to avoid, if you don't have an approach, I'm going to be able to see that. I'm going to be able to pick that up because your lack of approach is going to have you diving out over the dish, which is mm -hmm. going to tell me I don't have to throw you a strike early. And it's also going to tell me the inside of this plate is wide fucking wide open. open. So I get to take whatever I want. I get to do whatever I want to you. And your lack of approach is already telling me that. Like, honestly, an OO buried changeup can tell me a lot about you if you don't have an approach because – you're probably doing something with your front foot, with your hands. There's probably a shift in weight that mm -hmm. I'm going to feel, that I'm going to pick up on. And you might not swing in it, and it might be 1-0, but I already know what the next two pitches look like. And if you're not out because you've rolled over that second changeup you're getting after I've gone back in for heat or strike, then I'm going to punch you out because I know what I can do. <laughs> yeah, you, you got Suzuki looking at the hitter. Man, I love it. All right, uh, let's, let's get to the at-bat. I love that we're talking shop here. I could talk baseball all damn day. All day, dude. All and, day. And lately, it's been we haven't had a lot of baseball to talk about, so this is nice. Um, this is a game in 2009, and I believe I read that you were the A's opening day starter in 2009. Is that correct? True story. Yes. How did, I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, right no, ask that first question. Ask the first question you wanted to ask. How in the hell? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I wasn't asked that. What, no, like, yeah, absolutely. What, uh, how did it Justin come about? Dukesher, I, Justin Dukesher, uh got hit by a bus, and and that's how I. No, he he had uh, he had hip surgery, and for those who don't know who Justin Dukesher is, put some respect on that man's name. Look him up. We're talking about an all-star starter, all-star reliever. Mm. Uh, the man did work, okay, and he did work from the right side, you know, below hitting speed, which is not an easy task, oh, but he had some hip issues and that put me in a position, barring my health to take the ball on opening day. So awesome. that, that's how that happened. I mean, nobody can ever take that away from you. You know, I, it's, it's such it's an great. honor to start opening day, even as a no, position player, just getting in the lineup is awesome, but to be a pitcher starting is really cool. It's, it's, it's one of those feathers in the cap, man. No that's doubt. Right. So you uh, here, we're in Texas, which is a tough place to pitch already. It's a launching pad. And this mm. is the old Texas. We're going to see how the new uh, stadium out there plays this year. But this one was a launching pad. And I was going through a bunch of the ABs. You're like locked in this April. I don't know what the numbers were, but you aren't missing many spots here in all the at-bats that I've seen. Yeah, I'm uh... – Early on, you know, Texas being a division opponent as well and knowing what kind of lineup that I was facing early on, uh, especially early in my career, those guys were – it was a salty vet lineup, knowing what the ballpark was going to play oh, like, yes. like. And knowing what kind of stuff I did not have, Ploofy. <laughs> you this better, lineup is stacked. Yeah, better be on point, man. All right, so here we go. It's two outs. We have the bottom of the third. Again, we're facing Michael Young here. Let's start this video up. Check it out. We're going to see a young baby. A young baby Dallas on the hill right there. We got no hair, no beard. I don't know what you, what do you got going? Is that a little, little goatee uh, action? Just a, yeah, a little goat, a little goat piece. <laughs> a little goatee. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bad baby goat. And there's that bad man in, at the plate, Michael Young. Mm. And you can already see, I mean, it's the camera angle maybe, but he's fucking angled the right center, right? Yeah, he's like, hey, look, everything you're going to throw right now, I'm going to I'm gonna take your second baseman for a fucking ride out to, out to that right gap. That's going to happen. All right. So first pitch here, you're the kind of guy that can go anywhere. Um, let's see what we got. Setting up in. Boom. Banged it down, and then you like that call. Early in because now I've given myself the opportunity to expand away if I want to get him out away, or I've allowed him to know, hey, I can come in here not only for a strike, but I can come in here off if I need to as well. Just know that I've already told you that I'm present on the inside. You know my game plan. You know I'm going to work away at some point in time. But when do we get there? How do we get there? Well, let's find out. What's, what's cool about that, that mindset, and I'm thinking now as a hitter in the box, it's like you think to yourself, I don't really need to worry about in when I'm facing a guy uh, like you mm -hmm. because you're like, I can react to the fastball. But the truth of the matter is when you're expanding the zone like that, now you're going to you know, open up the away side, you're throwing the change-ups, you're maybe changing speeds on fastball, that 80 
six to eighty nine plays up. Dude. Well, and 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 against a guy like Michael Young, his approach maybe my third bet or which is undoubtedly my third best pitch uh the slider i'm not gonna lay that in there and try to throw a first pitch quality strike with that to him because that's soft coming to him lefty on righty and Mm. he that's gonna be up and fat for him to you know maybe he wants to let it travel and really spin on it or maybe he wants to maybe he wants to shoot it the other way which he's really good at doing i I don't want to give him that opportunity all right let's go second pitch here Coming back inside right here, huh? Yeah, second pitch. We're going to double up. Ooh, that's a little slide piece, huh? Yes, yes. Trying to go. No, it's it's a, that's at 82, so that's a little I'm, – I'm trying to cut the baseball, just trying to work it in off, see if I can get some kind of swing. So now I see his feet move. Mm-hmm. I like that. As far as that ball kind of ended up off, I think it was a good take by him because he kind of tunneled that last pitch. Mm-hmm. The heater in with that slider in, and uh, unfortunately he saw it, but a good pitch. Yeah, well, and that's why I say I, I like to see his feet move for me yeah. because uh, now he's you know he's not necessarily buying into one or the other. Okay. All right, here we go. So one one, you can go anywhere here, and it looks like we are back in. I love this right here with the slide step. Slide step, heater, we got guy on first base. I think it's Marlon Bird. Um, not too worried about him going anywhere. But yeah. the idea there, again, staying hard because I know he knows I'm going to throw a changeup. At some point in time, <laughs> he's going to get the changeup. So with a guy like Michael Young, it's almost like I know he's already that one pitch ahead of me. How do I utilize my next move to, to almost make two moves in one? where I catch up to him, but then pass him as well in this chess game. And I'm not going to give in to him and go soft. No, to hell with that. I'm going to stay hard. I'm going to make him adjust because right now it looks like he's fighting off, fighting off, fighting Mm -hmm. off. He's not ready or anticipating that fastball. He's looking to adjust to something soft. I agree. You can totally see that. Um, And I like that you said that, like you could tell that he's late on the heater. because he's 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 looking for that changeup or an off speed pitch. It's a defensive hack on a fastball yes. against a guy who's throwing 86, 87. I've been there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one two now. Now you you can open your bag of tricks up wherever you want to go. But it looks like yeah. you're continuing to go inside here. Yeah, and this plays back into the yeah yeah back. Oh, you're getting booed, booed. <laughs> booed. Got to control the running game. Some people like to say that they control the running game. That's cute. I eliminated the running. Mark game. Burley is your guy. Mark that's, Burley. That's a great example of that. Mark Burley, Andy Pettit. Oh yeah. Yeah. So again, want to want to keep it in the. Oh. Oh. We got to go back there. Hold on. I wasn't ready for that. Oh. All right. He got away with it. So leading. Forget up you to saw this. that, people. <laughs> one, leading two. up to this, yeah. one two, we've stayed what hard three times, right? Yes. He hasn't seen that change up. So, in this count, one, two, I'm going to go wrinkle here. Or, or do we not tell him? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, man. They already so, saw it. Screw so that one up. So we're, try, so, we're trying to back foot it. I, I get away with a mistake here. And in this my is a change up? No, this is not a change up. Okay. Roll it. Let the people see. I'm going to show you right now. So, you're going to see this. You're going to see this slide piece. This. Oh. That was gross, right? That was below average at best. Look at this thing. Just a spinner up and and look at where he's at. He's almost like tied up with it. He is. You, you, you jammed him, tied him up with the slide piece. Right, with an elevated, just gross slide piece. Gross as in not good. It was not, not good. And it's because he sees it soft out of the hand and he's expecting that pitch right there to continue to fade arm side. He's not thinking uh, that he's getting my third best pitch with two strikes. There's no way he's getting my third best pitch with two strikes, right? So that's I part of that. That's part of me trying to stay one step ahead or having to make two moves to every one that he's making because he's so damn good. So it's like, all right, I roll the dice here and try to back foot him with my third best pitch because worst case scenario, if I execute he swings and misses or best case scenario for him if i've done my job still he foul he pulls this into foul territory right 
and we're still at one, two. And now I can try to heat him up inside, still not giving in and giving him the soft stuff. Or now I make the decision to go my best versus your best right here, right now. And, and that's what being able to execute with my third best pitch would have done for me. But I mean, there I get away with one, so I don't have to continue in that sequence. Yes. But, but those are the moves that ensue if I'm not able to get him out. This is what you're talking about. So right about here, Mike's picking up this ball and you're saying, you guys have faced each other a ton before this. Yeah. So he's expecting change up. Yes. At some point. Yes. Right about here, he's like, okay, this ball is going to come. It's going to come down. It's going to fade away arm side. And I'm going to drive it to, you know, right field, right center, whatever yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. But as we get here, and you're going to notice how he is tied up on this pitch, right? There. Yeah. Look at how far back. Look, look at where the barrel's at. He's not ready for that pitch. It's tying him up, like you said. It's so because you, that, I, I think at that moment that you pause it, where he processes that that is now starting to come to him. It's, you know, mm-hmm. he, pro- he processes that it's soft and it's up and it's a, and it it's away at the moment. So his brain and his body tells him everything that's correct most of the time, which is hammer this soft shit the other way. But it just continued to spin just enough towards him where it tied him up. And that, I mean. I got away with one. <laughs> I, I got away it. with you one. Could, you could tell he was just like, uh-oh. He's like, what happened? Not to this guy. He, well, he, he recognized it way too late right there. I mean, yep. which is a testament to them, kind of how you uh, set him up right there, how you were hiding the ball and you tunneled some pitches. He had no chance. No. So, Sorry, Dallas, Mike. you demand this. This is a bat number one. Yes. We're bringing you back on for a bat number two, which is from a very special day in your career. Um, thank you for all the helpful tidbits, the insight. All the kids love this shit. So, um, you put on a master class there and how to pitch. So we thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, we just went over in a bat with you and Michael Young, a chess match, uh, that you won and you explained it beautifully. And he's one of the best hitters that I ever got to play against and you carved him up. So we love ah. that. This one wait. though is very, is a very important day for you in your career. Um, like I said, uh, Intro in the last episode, you're one of, at this time, you're the 19th person in baseball history to throw a perfect game. There has been 23 to this date, which is incredible. We've been playing baseball for over 100 years. Uh, that's got to make you feel pretty good. It's, it's just, uh, dude, it's nuts to even think about, right? You, you, you know, and there's milestones and numbers and achievements that are talked about that are heralded and celebrated and to ever think that you are ever going to be a part of any one of those conversations or have any sort of like acknowledgement amongst the game's greats of all time. Like, it's just like, you just don't even, it's surreal to me. Man. You're in the it, club, man. Like no one could ever take that away from you. Yeah, no. Hey, I, I, amazing. I, I've said it's the longest running episode of punk going. I'm, <laughs> I'm still waiting for, for Ashton to pop out. Well, he ain't coming out, buddy. Because it happened and we got proof. Um, This was on Mother's Day. Yeah. Very special day. Um, I think kind of, I don't know. I know the story. Um, A lot of people know the story. You are a very successful media person in baseball now. Very famous baseball media person. So I I think a lot of people know the story. But if you want to kind of just talk about it a little bit, I'd I'd love to share it with the people that haven't. Because it is such a, a cool moment. Not only yeah. like the perfect game, but like who was there and why it's important to you. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously Mother's Day, very poignant day for us. A very like heartfelt day, a uh, day that was dreaded for a long time. I lost my mother when I was in high school. So it was nothing that was ever celebrated between my grandmother and I, who was the one who took over, you know, for a short time after I had lost my mom. And then I go off to junior college and I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm on the doorstep of the world, but without my grandmother there, none of those, none of those journeys are, are possible. This big, long journey is not possible. And so to have her, to, to have her in my life period, to have her at a baseball field on mother's day, just kind of yes. putting my life in perspective would have, would have always been a great day. And it still wasn't for whatever reason. And, and, that might be selfish, but I, you know, without getting too deep, it just, uh, 
there's a lot of pain there for us. And uh, being able to celebrate that now and have that day now is incredible. And, and to not know what was unfolding on that day and, and knowing everything that we had been through, to have my grandmother there, me pitching, and every out kind of bringing us closer to to closure, which is kind of weird to say that it took a, a you know such a such a crazy moment in baseball, a crazy moment in time for for us to really start to begin to heal. I mean, we'll have Kyle clip in the you know afterwards when when she comes onto the field, but whenever I see that moment, it's like a chills inducing moment. Like you just feel like the energy and you know, how proud she is of you. you just, everything is just there in that video. So, um, it's just such a special moment, man. No, it's, it's to dude. And, and I, you know, we're not going to see this here, but she jumps off the dugout or if you have into the game, she's on the dugout. Dude. What did she say? Like, was she like cognizant of the perfect game? Cause I, you know, or, or were you cognizant of it the whole time or not, not until I want to, I want to say like the, like the sixth inning or so, like we we had scored a couple runs. Uh, I think I, I think we had scored all four runs by that time um, against James Shields mm-hmm. and Big there's game. a mound, right Wego and and so there's a mound meeting and I'm kind of you know I'm taking stock of the situation at that time mound meeting their guy it's four nothing like you know I, I'm thinking we're in a position to really kind of put the hammer down. This is where you absolutely you know call it a day for the other team. This is where you drive the nail in. And I'm starting to do math, which I'm not great at. And thank God they're very low numbers on the scoreboard at that time, oh, which man. helped me out. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, I don't think I've – well, it says I haven't given up a hit. I don't think I've walked any – oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. So and then you got nine hours to go. I can just – I remember saying to myself, like audibly saying, don't don't baby this. Just don't, don't fucking baby this. Don't blow this. And God, that's excellent. I mean, yeah, the – to get inside your head there is so cool because obviously not many people have been in that position. You're looking at it like, don't try to do it. Just go be you. Right. Is that, is that what you're thinking right there? Absolutely. Because I, I mean, I, I, even in that moment, I was still being honest with myself and still like almost joking with myself internally. Like you just got to keep doing what you're doing. Like believe your 85 is 95 on the inside. And (laughs) know that they're not going to hit the changeup. Know that they're going to be lucky to touch it with the bat. Just know that. That's what you've thought every single time you take the mound. Why would it change now? Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, and frankly, like it wasn't, I was not in a great headspace to begin with, you know, mm-hmm. for that, on that day for a couple reasons. Um, sure. So I was just kind of like, you know, in a, hey, if, fuck, if it's working, then just whatever. Keep doing it. And this is against a pretty good Tampa Bay lineup. One of my all-time favorite players is in the lineup, Evan Longoria. Longo. Gotta love him. So yeah. this is a, this is an at-bat that uh, obviously we got, see here, top six, two outs. And pretty funny, the hitter here. I don't know why it's funny. I don't know why I say funny, but it's cool. We have Gabe Kapler coming up, obviously the manager of – the Giants now. I played under him in the Phillies. I grew up with Gabe, so I've. This is a really fun moment. I can't wait to tell him that we're going over this at bat. <laughs> um, but it's a long one and a good one and another um, example of how you kind of approach the game and how you approach your um, yourself. And this has kind of got to be a little frustrating because you said you kind of recognize it right around here, and then you have this long ass at bat. Yeah. And everyone has, you know, and when you look back at those perfect games and no hitters, it's like there are certain at bats that get a little dicey and you got to work your ass through them. And I think uh, this is, looks like it's one of them for you. Yeah. If you're, if you're ever going to, if you're ever going to finish a ball game, you want to stay away from at bats like this, <laughs> especially if you're, if you find yourself in position to, I don't know, join a very rare select group like yeah you want to stay away from those fucking 10 12 pitch abs not great all right let's get right to it because this is this is too much fun i gotta see it so okay but i do have to preface this so when i was going through finding the at bat they show they show a highlight so the the person before 
Gabe, I don't know who it's hitting. Hits like a fly ball into foul territory. We all know Oakland has a zillion yards of foul territory. But you see a young Dallas here take a beeline to go for this ball. I'm going to show it right now. <laughs> go, go, I got go. it! <laughs> I got it! Finally, I think it's Kuzmanov is like, get the Hold fuck on. out of Finally, here. Finally, is there any way to rewind this? Because this might be the only angle that will ever tell the true story. Here we go. I let up. Look, watch. I let up. I let up. You want me to go? Kuzmanov. No, no, not, not yet. Watch me. Right, like as soon as I as soon as the camera angle changes and allows you viewers to see all of us, watch me and watch my glove, watch my head. I chop my steps. I look over to Kuz and I'm like, is somebody gonna catch this? Like I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stop because I, I'm not supposed to catch this. And if I do, I'm gonna embarrass not only my catcher, but I'm gonna embarrass my third baseman because we all know I'm the best athlete on the field. Mm -hmm. Any given time, I'm on the field. So <laughs> why would this go any differently? Well, I don't want to get yelled at, stay out of it, let the players play. So whatever. you didn't hear him call it? Uh, I, I let him have this ball, Pluvi. Let me see, let's see. Look at him go, look at him go, look at him go. Look, look, see, look, I chop, I look over, I'm like, somebody, somebody. I got to be honest with you. It looks like at that moment you wanted no part of that ball. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, please, somebody come get come me. Come on. Oh, I don't uh, want to hear it. That's another, that's, that's dude, another right fielder talking shit. Right? I've been in that situation, bro. Like, left fielder, call me off. I don't want this <laughs> fucking ball. My goodness. All right, I had to show that because I thought it was funny. You're obviously in it. You're like, let's go. Let's go. Let's get out. Another good view of a little young Dallas right there. Oh, I mean, so, handsome so, young man. So sexual, rocking that Mizuno two-piece. Oh. I actually think you've gotten better looking in your old age. So yeah, well, the, the, more of the, the more of that that gets covered up, the better. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right, here we go. So Gabe Kapler, kind of a guy – Let's. Just talk about Gabe for a little bit. Kind of a uh, Michael Young White. He's not going to take aggressive hacks. Probably has a plan. Oh yeah. You know nothing. No, he's not a power hitter. Not a speedster. Just like a professional hitter. Yes. Yeah. Again, a guy who a guy who does his homework. A guy mm -hmm. who knows what he's about to get, and he's not somebody who strays from what has gotten him to where he's at. Right. And that's yep. that's part of Cap's mo to this day is I, I know what has made me successful. I'm going to implement that. At the same time, I'm going to open my mind and expand and get better because he's in a position to do that now. But at this moment in time, it's about him competing with his brain and his approach mm -hmm. against a guy who he knows kind of what he's going to get. I love Cap. I think he'd be a great fit in Oakland. I know Bo Mills doing it there. But yeah, I, yeah. Love, I love Kapler in Philly. I don't think it was the right fit for him there. But that Bay Area, I think, is going to be just perfect for him. Good vibe. All right. Uh-oh. Starting off in. Boom. Great. Give pitch. it to me. Give it to me, Wolfie. New catcher, Landon Powell. Um, yeah, I've had, I had Jim, Landon. Jim Wolf behind the dish? Yeah, Jim, Jim Wolf behind the dish. But I had Landon with me all through the minor leagues as well. Landon and Zook together. So when you talk about a pitcher being lucky, I was pitching to – the Johnny Bench Award winner and the runner-up, right? Love that. That's that's not a bad place to be when you uh, enter pro ball. No. All right, so the same thing happened last about Start off with that heater inside, establishing that part of the plate. Now you can kind of go anywhere. Yep, and that's the that's that's the idea is we're going to – it's oh too early. And this is what's frustrating about this. Is Let's because go, Gabe. Now it's about trying to put this guy away, and this is where the fun begins mm -hmm. because – Three pitches or less, right? And three pitches or more, I got to be punching you out because okay. I can't put the pressure on my guys. That's how I look at it. As the as the pendulum as the pendulum swings, it becomes advantageous for that hitter because now everybody's kind of I don't want to say on edge, but you know everybody's kind of waiting, sure, waiting, waiting. Sure. There's been no action. What's that first step really going to look like when that ball is put in play? I just feel like it's advantage hitter. So I have got to do my job here. I've got to step on the gas. And I don't mean fastball. I mean, I've just got to punch you out. I love that because I know, I mean, look, as, a, as an infielder in a situation like this, you're like, fuck, man. There's some pressure there. Well, well I and mean, you some pressure is an understatement. There's a fucking lot of pressure. 
And at times, infielders or even outfielders can become spectators. You find yourself mm. watching the battle at the dish as opposed to being involved in that pre-pitch, in that feel, that game flow, because you're like, damn, this is, what is this, the ninth pitch? What's he going to, oh, shit. Uh, yeah, oh, I damn. That. You get a little flat-footed out there. Yeah, so I want to avoid that. All right, O2, baby. You're trying to put him away, like you said. Yeah, and O2, the pitch count is, uh, the pitch count is nice at this point. So I feel like I want to go back in and look, he covers it. That's all he can do with that pitch. Yeah, and it's 80. Look, it's 84. So I'm trying to probably try to cut it a little. Just, you know, get him to start because I've thrown, I think, uh, I think that second fastball was a two seamer. So mm -hmm. a comeback, uh, a comebacker. And now I'm trying to create an intersection on, yes. on that inner third, right? And so I get him, that's how I get that swing is I've cut that ball. He's, he has to respect the fact that I've thrown two strikes in there. In. And playing he has that, to, playing that X game on that inside corner. I love that. Yes. All right. So there, there I said, I, I mentioned the pitch count. So I'm at 72, getting ready to close out the sixth. Slurve? No. See, change up. Change up. Change piece right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That moved a lot. Holy shit. Let's go back and look at that really quick. Okay. All right. So you buried one. Yeah. As a hater now, you're like, okay, fastball, 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 change up. You know, the most obvious location is coming back in or doubling up. And we're going to see what you do here. And you doubled up. Went away. You told me you'd like to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? Those, that, that was, those were sliders or slurves or whatever. That Because that right there, that's a slurve. This is a slurve right here. Yes. Okay, yeah, it looks like it. And that and that pitch before it was okay. as well. So you haven't seen he hasn't seen the changeup yet. Not yet. God, you can look like he. I mean, he's obviously way out in front of those pitches. He's battling. You got yeah, him. What? His his timing's off. Like you, you look like you got him right now. Well, and so if that if that cutter that I throw to him O two is mm -hmm. a true fastball, that ball probably stays fair, right? But it mm -hmm. had just enough cut on it. To run off the barrel, he pulls it foul. He can't keep it fair because it doesn't stay true. So if that true, if that if that fastball stays true, he's able to stay inside of it just enough, probably keep it fair, and is probably snuck it down the line for a double. Yeah, it looked like it. It's a tough play for a third baseman, anyhow. Yeah, no doubt. All right, one, two. Uh, you've seen the slider. You've seen a couple different heaters. Here we go. Section 209. I don't know if you saw that. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's love. All right. Here we go. What do you got for us, Gabe? 89, Ploof. You could have had that pitch. Landon, let me tell you something, buddy. You could have had this pitch for old Dallas here. Tell him. Tell him. Ride me, me out of the that. dome like a damn rodeo clown. Wow. Ah, it's down. It's down. Come on, Pluffy. I don't want that pitch called on. <laughs> hey, nowadays they get their glove on the ground, they fucking go up. He might have got That's that it. ball. That's it. Working low to high. Yeah. All right. Two two. Let's see what he gives. Oh, you're going heater in. Yeah. We saw the we saw the 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 sign there. Gabe, he's just battling right now. Well, he's covered it all. Now there you got away with one because that one oh, was yeah. over the plate. Yeah, you watch Landon's hand reaching back. Look at that. Yeah. And so, Gabe's hip is gone, so I don't know if uh, he's, he is looking inside. Absolutely. So I get – this is where I get away with one by missing middle because he's expecting that ball in. He's, he's probably got his hands geared. That path, everything is in, right? Yes. And there he's just reacting to a ball that's a strike, and, he's try and he essentially has to spoil a pitch yes. down the middle. If you hit your spot, there's a chance that he pulls that ball down the left field line because yep. it's exactly what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. But you got away with one. It's okay. We all need those. Need them. Look, he's just he just, and you can he's just looking at me. You can tell he's just like, what? <laughs> what are you? What do you got? You don't have game? anything to throw by me. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Like, he's how are you gonna do this? He's expecting to change it. I mean, he's got to be thinking that he still yes. haven't thrown it yet. Right. He's just gotten wrinkles. And there Ooh, it is. There it is. That's the change. Yes. That one moved a ton. 
That's that outer far, half going down and away. You see Excellent. how far out in front he is, one-handed, right? So now I've got the option. I can, again, double this up and expand the zone because in my in my mind, and I can, I can let this out now, 3-2, I'm going change-up. Like if it gets to 3-2, I'm throwing a change-up. God, you, I'm just thinking now, you're in a perfect game. You're like, I don't want to go to 3-2. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, but, but like for me, that would be like, that's the go-to. That's the go-to. Because, you're confident in that pitch, yeah. 3-2, two, two outs. He's, come on, he's got one thing on his mind. One thing. Oh my goodness. It's actually a great piece of hitting by him just because that's a tough pitch. Flailing. See, even that pitch is up. It's just out and it's 70 miles an hour. He's, again, I think he's just kind of, you see it, Landon sees it. He's looking to pull the ball. Well, come on. After the first two, the first yep. three pitches, that's what. That's why pitching to the inside part of the plate, even as a guy who's throwing 86, 87, 88, is so important. Is because yes. that first pitch set the tone for the at bat. The second pitch confirmed that I will come in there. The third pitch let him know uh, I'm I'm trying to get you out in here. Actually, like I'm not even going to try. I'm not even fiddling around with expanding away. I'm going to get you out in here. And honestly, that's part of knowing how you're going to get a guy out later in the game. Mm -hmm. So why am I going to go that route now? I know. And then that's part of like, I, I took, I took that from Greg Maddox, listening to Greg Maddox uh -huh. talking about how he know how he was going to get a guy out in the sixth inning. So let's do something unconventional, maybe the first or second time around, because I've got that third out locked up. That's a done that. And that. that was kind of my approach is if I, if I can get you out with a fastball inside early, in the game, then maybe get you to roll over a little sinker or something with some run, your second AB. Now I can go anywhere I want. Cause mm -hmm. I've just gotten you out twice with fastballs. <laughs> with fastballs. I love that. And you see like, so Gabe, you know, not known as a great hitter in his career and which very few people are, but those great hitters, the difference between a guy like me and Gabe and those hitters is they don't let the pitcher dictate their approach necessarily no. like they have a plan obviously but like just because you went inside first pitch doesn't mean i'm going to start opening up when you watch miguel cabrera hit he knows exactly what he wants to do mm -hmm. and he's not going to let you change it just f from one pitch like no. there needs to be you need to continue to hammer that pitch hammer that pitch hammer that pitch over a course of maybe a couple different starts for him to make an adjustment to what he's doing so you can see with a guy like this you know, Gabe is now trying to fight back against those first two pitches because you got his mind thinking about that inside part of the plate. Now he's seen a few pitches away, and I can just tell, looking at his face right here, he's like, okay, I got to I gotta kind of keep that hit from going. I got to maybe stay back a little bit longer, see the pitch, and, and react to it instead of opening up right away. So let's 2-2 let's two -two here. Change up? Yeah. That's three in a row. Not afraid. Not afraid. <laughs> Not, Not afraid. Not afraid. Hold that one foul. Now you, it looks to me like right there. That's like a face. Like, okay, I got it now. Yeah. Well, it's. It, I'm, I'm thinking to myself. This is the third time that he has been able to hang in here on this pitch. Okay. So I've got to go one or two ways. I've got to really turn this thing over, and I've got to really suck it off, or. I've got to step on the gas and I've got to get in there in. and make it happen. Those are the only two, I mean, because again, contrary to the Michael Young situation, I'm not looking to get Gabe Kapler out right now with this kind of battle with my third best pitch mm -hmm. because you see how he's able to keep his hands back. There's no way I can afford to throw that same pitch that struck Michael Young out that mixed in the middle of the plate. I can't throw that to Gabe Kapler right here, right now. Can't happen. No, I know the, I know the result of the at-bat, obviously. But I don't remember how it happened, and I'm very excited to see, because this has been a great at-bat. Dallas is ready. He looks like he's got his pitch he wants. So that's what that face told me right there. Yeah, I'm, let's fucking go. Kids, you ready for this? <laughs> let's go. go find, Check it out. Go find your seat. See, there I go. You Step on the gas. There's 88. 88 up. Let me see if he was, where was he set up in? Yes, in. 
And you, like you said, you stepped in the gas, boom. And he's not even close to that. He's very late on that ball. Gabe, you were late. a little tardy right there. <laughs> ding, ding, tardy bell. <laughs> and that's 88, please. The guys like you talk about um, going back to that pitch, you know, doubling up, tripling up, quadrupling up. That makes it really tough on a hitter because a lot of guys don't do that. So you get into these patterns, mm-hmm. you know, okay, he, sh- he, he went away or he went up with a fastball, probably going to go with the slider here or the, the 12-6 curve. But with a guy like you who could, could quadruple up, it's, it makes it a really tough at bat. And it's not that the pitch is going to be nasty or anything like that. It's just that it's going to be a pitch that you're not anticipating. Exactly. Here we go. This is, I don't even know, 10th, 11th pitch of the at-bat right here. Yeah. 2-2, setting up in again. Guy just battling. And there you are again. You're like, go catch it. Look, see, see look, I peel, I peel off. I call it. I peel off. I give everybody the glory here, Poopy. Look, at peel off. Let the kids play. I mean. I would have loved if you wouldn't caught that. I would have freaking loved it. In my head, I wanted to just give him one of these, like a, like a just a over-the-back type deal. That would have been incredible when he finished the game off. Uh, I want to see this pitch again. This is the end of the at-bat. Um, going in, he's just not ready for it. He's nope. late. And it's because, because what did we do? I gave him soft, 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 right? And then he got hard, hard. Oh, no, not soft. He got hard again. Bam. And I just beat him to a spot. You did. You, this, this is the same position that Michael Young was in. That's all it is. It's beating a guy to a spot. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna blow it past him. I'm not gonna overpower him. It's a strike, and he's gonna make contact with it. But I have beaten him to the point of attack. He is at exactly. my mercy right here. He can do nothing with this pitch. So how he wanted to fight off that that fastball middle that he was anticipating to be farther in, and all he could do was spoil that fastball. Same thing here. He would love to be able to just spoil this, but he's in a position where he can't control the bat head enough to do so. He's just got to try to get bat to ball, mm-hmm. and it results in and out. You beat him. That's it. Love that. I kind of want to go to the final out. If you got some time, I just want to see it. Yeah, let's do it. We'll taste, we'll, let's taste it right here. God, this is crazy, man. Section 209 going nuts. Oh! Okay, the lazy fly. Oh, no, kind of a. No, no. Of, I thought that was no, a lazy no, fly ball. That, that was, was not a lazy fly ball. That was the end. That's Epat's first game in left field. Oh, Look. my gosh. First game ever in left field. All right, Gabe's up again. Oh, oh. Come on, Jim. Come on, Wolfie, sing back there Are for me. Are you kidding me? You, you want to know why? Gabe and Jim go way back. Boys from Valley the Valley Boys. Uh-huh. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, uh. I, I need to get them both on the pod at the same time <laughs> to hash this out. That was a strike, especially in this situation here. All right. No love. So it's 1-0, right? All right. 1-0. Back Hello. with it. Back with it. Double up for me. I, right? I love that. The golden rule? You're going to throw the second one better? Let's go. Mm-hmm. Got that feel. Fuck it. It's 4 nothing. You're I've going inside even, now. I guarantee it. Yep. I've never even seen the ninth inning before. See? Now right there. You see how he's here? He's looking out. Look at that front foot. Look at that front mm-hmm. foot. And now you know that, what he's going to do. The, the upper body movement. Like, come on. That's at 88 miles an hour. And he's not being brushed back because it's coming in hot. He's, he's brushed back because he's looking out over. Wait. I love it. And you know what his hip's going to do this next pitch. <laughs> going to be leaving early. <laughs> Give an Irish goodbye on that hip. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that's not racist. I don't, I've only used that a couple I'm times a, in my life. I'm Irish. Oh, my God. Jim. Hey, so now, so thank you, Poopy. Thank you. Jim. Oh, unsolicited. Oh, my uh-huh. You missed the spot, but but let's check it out. Let me see if I can get it up. That's a straight. There goes Landon again. Rodeo clown me right out of yes. the zone. Yes, he he missed out for you. But if he set up over there, Jim's fucking. That's strike two. Jim singing. He's singing. Yeah, 
So, so now this is oh where my gosh, three this one. is where you need to know. Just because of the like mind state I was in all day long throughout the game, whatever. In my head, Pluvi, at that moment, that's a strike. Okay. That's a strike. So in my head, the count is now 2-2. Two, two. And that's the reality that I'm living in. The count is now 2-2. Two, two. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. In your head. In my that's head. That's the reality. In, in my head. So I'm now taking this 3-1 signal from Landon as if the count were 2-2. Two, two. Like for real, for real? Or you're just like, yes. no, I'm approaching it like it? No, no, no. I, because it was such a good pitch in my head, I, and what, this is the awkward moment is like after the game, there we're, you know, I'm talking back and forth to the, to the guys on the radio and they're playing the call over and they're like, uh, King Korak, just a velvet voice <laughs> for the A's and, and the three one. And, and I go, Ken, the three one, have you been drinking? And he goes, <laughs> Whoa, what are you what are you talking about and I'm, it was two two he was are like, you kidding me yeah and he's like no dallas it was three one i was like really dallas <laughs> can you imagine if you threw a ball and you're like waiting for the ball back because you think it's going to be three two and gabe's running down to first base bro I had no idea holy shit I had no idea okay that gives this whole I had no clue last pitch yeah. a, a new life so so and and here's the thing is three one like i'm going three one i'm throwing a change in. wow no, absolutely if it's three one nice i'm throwing pitch. a change yeah get back in the count we contact it best we're up by four yeah you know what i mean like he's not going to hit a five run homer i'm all good with it all so good with you're it. you're confident to throw that pitch for a strike oh yeah like More like so, i yeah. like if and if anybody would ever question that I would tell you to get in contact with Coach Doug Jumale at American River College in Sacramento, California, and he will tell you that one of the questions he asked me right before I threw my bullpen at the tryout was, what's your best pitch? And I said, change it. And he said, change piece. count 3-2, game seven of the World Series, bases loaded. What pitch do you throw? And I said, change up. And I said it as I was walking off to go get on the mound. Like there was no fucking hesitation. No. I love that. Love that. And so that's how, that's how I feel. So it's 3 1. So if it was 3 1. 3 1, 2 2, whatever. You know. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Freaking A, Dallas. You kidding me? <laughs> that is hilarious. Everyone's standing up like they're so nervous. I mean, if you could just tell their faces, and here we go. Right to old Cliffy. Oh. Losing my mind. Let it ride out. Look at this, baby. Oh, my God. How does that make you feel right now? <sighs> let's go back. Let's watch it again. That's the little taste. Because <laughs> let's, let's check this pitch out, too, while you gather your emotions here. You went heater. Yeah, heater. Well, so – because it's two two, so I'm like Landon goes change up, right? And I'm like, no, let's not go change up. Let's go let's fast. Save that for if we right. get to three two. Because if it's two two, he's sitting soft and he's sitting away, and he's going to hit that pitch, and I can't give that pitch to him right now. Two two, I can ball in and get to three two, and then give him the change up that he might be anticipating, but at three two probably isn't sitting on no and i'm gonna win that battle too for people who don't really know i mean two two and three one are completely different counts i mean (laughs) so so you're thinking it's two two you're trying to trick him with the heater Mm -hmm. he's knows it's three one he's like i'm gonna get a heater right here maybe change ups in the back of his mind a little bit but you gave him the pitch he was probably looking for Mm -hmm. he knows you don't want to walk anybody too you give him the pitch Luckily, or not luckily, I mean, you've been doing it. Hits it right at Cliffy, not too hard. And if there's yeah. any guy you want the ball hit to, it's him. No doubt. Not only because of the sure hands, but the dude has an absolute canyon. For Love an that arc. guy. And you're going nuts. I mean, so freaking cool, man. I yeah, love well, how happy your teammates are for you. You know, that's that's tell of. Well, they, they I mean, man, like 
you know how it is. You you, you bleed and sweat with those group those group of guys, and they know everything <laughs> about you. You know, like I just didn't know. You know, I didn't know what to do. Oh my gosh, man, that's so cool. And and a lot of those guys, you know, a lot of those guys know how much my grandma means to me. A lot of those guys still reach out and you know ask about my grandma to this day. Ben Sheets, cheater. You're going awesome. right. Are you going right to her right now? I, that's what I'm pointing at. And like I and I feel but like like yeah. honestly looking back I feel bad because like I didn't I didn't even look any of these guys in the eye you know like but I was just so like I'm hugging my coaches but I'm I'm not even I'm really not even focused I just want to get to my grandma and now I punch oh Landon gosh. in the chest because I <laughs> and then I think oh there he is up Steve Jim Scaling. This is amazing to watch, dude. You're just looking for her. You're like, where is she? You're like, get over here. Yeah. Love it, man. Oh. Chills, bro. There she is. It's so cool. That's why My you do it. Goodness. That's why you do it. Could watch this all damn day, dude. Oh man! And the stand, I mean, everyone's just know. They just know, man. When you're in a, when you see a moment like this happening, it's just so special. When and that's what's uh, like not to get all sentimental and shit, but a lot of these fans in this area, I grew up with, not only as a as a citizen in this community, but the older fans who watched me play in Stockton mm -hmm. and then watched me play in Sacramento the triple a club mm -hmm. and then watch me come to Oakland and grow up and take my lumps and get sent down and come back up and ride that <clears throat> roller coaster and, you know, have my day in the sun in front of them at home. And I mean, that's, this is storybook shit, bro. It's what dreams are made of right here. Yeah. Like a lot of, I, I, I had, I mean, the road I traveled to get to this point, Ploofy, like as far as pro ball is concerned, I played every step of the way at home. You know, my awesome. a, a ball, I played in Stockton, the, the town I grew up in. And double A was in Midland, Texas. I went to school at Texas Tech. Right That's there. Incredible. Triple A's in Sacramento, where I went to junior college. And I lived in Stockton when I played in triple A. And then once I got promoted to the big leagues, all the way in Oakland, an hour away, I lived in my apartment in Stockton. Uh, I was at work. This is crazy, man. You Nuts. got a great story. Nuts. You accomplished some amazing things on a big league field. One good day of work came back. And now, you're like the second coolest baseball media guy in the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> you transitioned well. I appreciate you coming on dude and then hey. we weren't even supposed to do this at bat but now i'm like so happy that we did it because you know this is this needs to be like documented and seen and shared uh, so it's 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 a cool moment and cap has been uh cap has been extremely gracious every time we uh we run into each other at the field i got you know i got it. i love that we're, <laughs> I gotta we're, get it in. we're tagging old gabe kapler yeah in this oh, video yeah. and we let it out baby we're, let him know. Let him know. Ploofy, hey, thank you, man, very much for having me on, brother. I appreciate you big time. It's always good to talk shop, especially with a guy who's been there, done that, plenty of dirt under his spikes. It's, uh, thank you. It's, it's refreshing, man. Love it. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, man, you've challenged me to a wiffle ball game, so that's still – Oh, yeah. We're in oh, quarantine. Yeah. yeah. But it's hey, going to happen, baby. I just got, I just got, I just got the new blitz ball strike zone and everything they sent out to me. It just got it today. I got to work so, on that, all right? I got to pick up a bat. That's Step what I got to do. Yeah, buddy. We don't need to talk about the offer you sent out to, to those minor league guys. Um, you, you're actually the one who's made me nervous about it. Because <laughs> I was confident as a, as a you-know-what. And then I talked to you last night, and you're like, you know, you better prepare. I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for coming on, Dallas. All right, big dog.